Hello and welcome to my Git by Example series. So in this series, we're going to be going over how to use the version control system Git, which is pretty much crucial to any developer, regardless of what technology they use, uh, and is used by pretty much everyone on a daily basis. So it's a crucial tool for code sharing and collaboration, ensures that development can keep going without damaging code that's already in production. And even when you're working on your own, it's crucial uh, as it lets you see what code has changed for what feature, hook up continuous integration and other actions like that, and keep your code up to date across multiple machines. So Git is even useful for things that aren't code. Uh, pretty much anything that's composed of Mosley text files can benefit greatly. Think about when you were writing a paper in school or something and you have uh, draft and then draft final and then final and then final draft and then final draft two and all of that. So Git would be one solution for fixing things like that. Uh, and pretty much anything that's mostly composed of plain text files can be stored in a Git repository. So the benefits that I've detailed up until now apply to pretty much any version control system, including something like Mercurial or SVC. Uh, but Git is by far the most popular and widely used option, and in my opinion is that because it is the best option. Um, so in this series, we're going to learn how to use Git to version control our projects. We're going to be working mostly from our terminal. So if you aren't familiar with how to use a Unix shell, be sure to check out my series on that linked over here. So if you want to see my development environment and the tools that I use, many of which make working with Git much easier, check out this video up here on my development environment. Uh, I will be using VS Code here as an editor to add text to files. Uh, but since the focus of this series is on Git, not any specific language, the actual code and text that I'm writing won't matter pretty much at all. So we're going to start this series by working in a local repository and then move on to putting it on GitHub and learning features more specific to that later. So I will also be doing my best to teach you best practices so that you use Git in a way that will be applicable in the real world. So the first thing I want to discuss is just how Git actually works. So Git is a version control system, but what does that actually mean? On a high level, it uses a model to track the different versions of all of the files in your project at different points in time. So it does that by taking snapshots of your file structure whenever you make a commit, uh, which is essentially just saying, this is a version I want tracked, uh, instead of tracking a series of changes like other version control systems do. So the benefit of that is incredible amounts of speed whenever you're doing anything with Git. Uh, and it's just really a much better model for this sort of thing than tracking different changes to files and having to reapply those anytime you want to jump around. So Git's other killer feature and the one that really sets it apart from other version control systems is its branching model. So we're going to get a lot deeper into branching later, uh, but for now you just need to know that it's a way to make changes to your files on a separate branch from your main code uh, where they're not editing your main code at all, either as a way to keep a different version that does something different going or to be merged in later with your main code. So the first thing that we're going to talk about now is how to actually get Git set up. Um, so this is going to depend on what operating system you're running, but I'm going to run through the three major options right now. So if you are on a Linux based operating system, then there is a very good chance that Git came installed with your operating system by default. Uh, but if not, then you can just download the package, which is usually just called Git uh, from your package manager. So that would be with sudo apt get on Ubuntu or pacman s on Arch or anything like that. Uh, if you're on Mac OS, then you simply need to install Xcode command line tools. So to do that, you can actually just run git dash dash version, um, which is just how you see what version git is. Uh, and if you don't have git installed yet and you're on Mac OS, then this is going to prompt you through an installation process. Uh, so you're just going to want to do that and then come back here. Uh, so if you're on Windows, though, I would highly recommend that you just install Windows subsystem for Linux, uh, which is essentially just a Linux machine sitting on top of your Windows machine so that you have access to a Unix shell and anything that runs on Linux. Uh, I'm going to link a tutorial on how to do that in the description. Uh, and you could also get by with other tools. Uh, for example, you could use git bash or um, what was the other old one? I don't remember. Um, which I will also link to down in the description. So now that we have Git installed, we're just going to do some really basic configuration. Uh, so right now we're just going to tell Git who we are so that it can correctly track all of our changes and attribute them to us. So to do this, we're going to be making use of the git config command. So the first th things that we're going to want to do is just tell Git our name and our email. So we're going to do this with git config dash dash global uh, user dot name. And here we're just going to want to put our name. Um, so that's my name right there. And uh, we can just run that. Uh, ignore that line. I keep forgetting to disable that. 
Uh, and then for our email, we're going to do much the same thing, but with user.email instead. So since your email doesn't have any spaces in it, you don't need to put it in quotes and you can just put it in like that and that will go ahead and set your email. So then once you're done with that, Git knows who you are and we are ready to jump into actually working. Um, so I recommend creating a directory where you can store all of your projects as just a way to stay organized. There are a lot of different folder structures you can use for this, uh, but the way I do it is I just have a folder called projects that's inside of my home directory. Uh, and this just has all of my projects kept inside of it. Uh, I would The one thing I would recommend against is keeping your repositories in a folder that's managed by like a cloud storage platform uh, so for example, if you have like Google Drive backup and sync or whatever, uh, don't put it in the folder that's managed by that. If you have Dropbox, don't put it in the folder that's managed by Dropbox. And if you have iCloud Drive, do not put it in one of the folders that's managed by that because there are some weird things that can happen and overall you're just keeping redundant data for no reason. Um, so now just navigate to wherever you do plan to keep your project and you're gonna want to create a new directory there for your project. So I'm just gonna call this one git example. Um, so we're gonna do that and then we can go ahead and move into it and then to start our git repository, we're simply going to run the command git init. So then once we do that, you will see that Git has initialized an empty repository in our folder. Um, so that's pretty much all we're gonna do for today. But before we go, I just have a quick note for you. And that is that throughout this series, I will be referring to the default branch in a Git repository as the master branch. Uh, as at the time I'm making this video, that is still the default name. So if you are watching in the future when this has switched over to being called main, then it pretty much just switch out every single time that I say master in one of these videos with main. Uh, and everything should still work the same other than that. So that is going to be all for today. I hope you stay tuned for the next episode where we're finally gonna put some content in our repository and learn how to actually do the basics of Git. Uh, and that is going to be it for today. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.